welcome to this edition of the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Sam, we welcome Jeff Cooley. Nice to have him back. Hi. Sure is. Jeff was here in an earlier program, not this season, but previously, and you were coaching then? Boys track. Okay. Yeah, track and field. And since then, you've... Uh, Taken on the role <laughs> as girl, girl soccer coach, yeah, absolutely. How are they doing? Uh, we're doing okay. We're down Good. to the last couple games yeah, of the season. This week. And, uh, uh, we're five, eight, and one right now. We just had our sectional draw uh, last night. Okay. We drew, we drew Shelbyville in the first round, so, and we tied them previously. So we're looking to get a little revenge on them. Where will that be played? At Shelbyville. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's um, it's Shelbyville and us, and then uh, New Palestine got the bye, and Rushville and Beach Grove are in the other bracket. So that starts a week from today. It does. October second. October second. Yep. Be be here before you know it. It will be. <laughs> Tell us about your team, uh, seniors, juniors. Uh, uh, we, have, we, have, we have a lot of seniors and juniors. We have eight seniors, and uh, I'm thinking 11 juniors. They're a good-looking crew. I'll give oh. you that. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, there they are. Yeah, um, yeah we have eight seniors, um, I think 11 juniors. So we're, we're, we're upperclassmen dominated mm -hmm. um, numbers-wise, and uh, those girls do, do the bulk of the work for us. When did you start your season? Um, I personally started the season about three and a half, four weeks ago, over a month ago. Um, the okay. girls started um, August 15th against mm -hmm. Newcastle. Um, there were a couple games before I took over, so. After the sectional, where they play, were regional, or do you know yet? Well, we, I'm, I did not, I didn't look that far. Okay. Um, I know that the whole sectional takes place in Shelbyville, and mm -hmm. then uh, if we happen to win the sectional, uh, We'll, we'll figure it out from there. I'm sure Coach Duncan will get us a bus if we if we need one. <laughs> Is there just one field at Shelby, or do they? Uh, there's just one field. Okay, it's it's so there behind it's... the uh, middle school, sort mm -hmm. of. It's very nice. Has lights. Very nice. Good. Yes. Have you played there this year? We did. We just okay. uh, two weeks ago we played at Shelbyville versus Shelbyville, of course, mm -hmm. and um, tied them in a Good. game that we probably could have won. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about, excuse me, um, in a sectional, in a tournament game, uh, you couldn't have a tie and no, keep going, so, no. so how's that handled? <laughs> well, if, if that happens, we have a, a extra time, two overtime periods. If no one scores then, we go to penalty kicks. Best five, the first, you know, best out of five penalty kicks. Okay. Um, actually, interestingly, the last time I coached, we won a sectional that way on penalty kicks versus Newcastle that year. So, yeah, it's a, it's a distinct possibility. Well, that would be great if, if it came down uh, to that. So Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it turned one. out that way. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I would love that. And what year was that that you won the sectional? Uh, 2008. 2008. As, as a matter of fact, um, Laura Richards, I don't know if you remember oh, Laura. Yes. I just saw her. She came home from home for homecoming mm -hmm. and uh, reminded me of that. And it was pleasant to see her. Brought back some good oh, yeah. memories. Yeah, she, good athlete. Very good athlete. Did she play in college? Any of your your girls, uh, Jeff, move on to play girls soccer? Are any of uh, these girls? Come, well, or, no, the, in past. Oh no, um, uh, Laura Richards went on to play at Valpo, but she played basketball. Okay. Um, I did have a couple of, I think a couple of girls um, might have gone on and played a little small college soccer, mm -hmm. but. No one that yes. I, I can remember played yes. Division One. Yeah. What kind of training do you want do these girls have or go through? Well, we normally practice an hour and a half, two hours a night. Um, in the summertime, they have they have um, workouts mm -hmm. a couple, two, three times a week. Um, okay. It's it's a pretty normal normal like a basketball program, I guess you'd say. A couple hours, uh, five, six days a week. Yes. Do you want them to participate in other sports? Oh yeah, I, I, I'm a big I'm a big proponent of um, participating in everything. I think that a well-rounded athlete mm -hmm. is better than um, than someone who is just um, focused on one one thing. And I, I, and I don't know if I know Coach Duncan has probably talked about this. I haven't seen him on the on your show recently, but I'm sure he has. That the recruiters, the NCAA people. Look for those type of kids yes. now that, that are well-rounded. They play more than one sport. Uh, and I, I, think, I think that helps them immensely for each sport to get that little bit of 
different situation in other sports. What, what sport would help a girls soccer player oh, and vice versa where a girls well, soccer player, where, where would she do well in sports? Well, well I, I mean track and field, okay. cross country, conditioning, you can never be in too good a shape. Um, I, I, anything, I mean, track and field, pole vaulting, running, mm -hmm. all that. It just all crosses over. It, it, just to make a good athlete, you have to just be able to do everything. And still keep up your studies. And still keep up your studies. That's why they're, that's why they're student athletes. That's right? right. The student comes first. That's right. That's right. And uh, I, and fortunately, these I have some really uh, really intelligent girls. They 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 have some high GPAs. Good. Mm. Good. Good. Talk more with Jeff and. Just a couple of seconds here. We want to bring you up to date on what's going on this week at CHS. Uh, today, the junior varsity squad, the football, is playing at Centerville. That's the only event today, which is kind of unusual. Uh, tomorrow, the boys' tennis will be playing Union County at Connorsville. The cross-country teams are at the Batesville Invitational. Girls' soccer, junior varsity, and varsity plays Franklin County. That'll be here at Connorsville on Tuesday. And the varsity and junior varsity volleyball, they will be going to East Central. Wednesday is an off day. Thursday, the boys' soccer varsity and junior varsity will be playing at Batesville. And those are the final season games. The sectional will be beginning uh, next Monday at Greenfield for the boys. The boys' tennis sectional begins at Connorsville at 5 o'clock on Thursday. The cross country and junior varsity uh, the cross-country team will be at Greensburg Invitational. That will be the final meet of this season. The girls' soccer, varsity, and junior varsity host Greensburg here at CHS. Final games of the season. Start time will be at 5 o'clock. And on Thursday, the volleyball teams, varsity and junior varsity, will be traveling to Rushville for, for action. On Friday, it is Spartans varsity football at East Central. It'll be uh, kickoff time for 7.30. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron, I believe they, everybody else starts at 7, or Ron, I mean, uh, Jam, but they start at 7.30. Yeah, uh, 7.30 kickoff. Um, Dave and I will be on the air at 7.15. For folks that uh, can't make it, uh, be sure to tune, tune in to KMEX, and we'll have all that. And be uh, second week in a row, a uh, little later start. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Why does uh, East Central start it? Well, someone said that they try to get it later so the sun is not in their eyes. But <laughs> earlier in the season, that makes doesn't make a lot of sense to me because uh, the sun is going to be in their eyes, especially with daylight savings time. Well, that's a reason anyway, I guess. You mm -hmm. can come up with a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think their field uh, does go uh, east-west, east west, not north-south. Yeah. On Saturday, the boys' tennis sectional continues at Connorsville. That has a 10 o'clock start. And also the varsity and junior varsity volleyball will be at Lawrenceburg. That also has a 10 o'clock start. At the middle school today, the 7th and 8th grade football is meeting Newcastle. The cross country is in action at Greensburg. Tuesday, the middle school volleyball team will be in a match with Union County. The swimming and diving team will be at South Dearborn. On Wednesday, the volleyball team meets Richmond. Julia Test, and on Thursday, the volleyball team will be in action with Cambridge City. A swimming and diving team will be also in action at Richmond. And Saturday, the volleyball team will be hosting an invitational. Start time is 9 o'clock here at the middle school. Do you have the middle school uh, team? Do they feed Connorsville or anything? Unfortunately not. We don't okay. have a middle school program. Um, hmm. <clears throat> We do have a lot of youth soccer. Um, okay. We have, uh, matter of fact, um, 200, I just happen to know this, I'm, I, I just uh, heard this figure the other day, 245 youngsters, 10 and under, are playing uh, soccer at, down at the <laughs> soccer complex. Um, so we do have somewhat of a feeder system. Yes. And we do have what are called youth, under U12, U15. We have teams that travel um, from the age, actually, I guess, my high school girls too, from that age down, do travel leagues. And so yeah, we have a feeder program, yes. just not a really a middle school uh, affiliated feeder team, I okay. guess you'd say. Okay.
in the athletic conference, Eastern Day Athletic Conference, uh, how'd you do? Is very, very tough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we still have two games. We have a game against Franklin County Tuesday and a game against Greensburg Thursday. Yes. So if we can win those two, we'll finish fifth. Okay. Which is, is okay, um, considering that the, the top four are all ranked in the state of Indiana. Um, at the time we played them, East Central was ranked, I think, third. Okay. Um, Batesville, I think, was second in our class. Mm -hmm. um, we just played 1-0. Uh, we, we've just lost to Lawrenceburg 1-0, and they were ranked 11th in 2A. Okay. So. So, I mean, we, we've done okay against sure. those, but they are really the next, the next level elite. I mean, they really are. <laughs> Well, congratulations on the season and best well, of luck in, in the coming tournament. I appreciate How that. How many classes are there in soccer? There are three. There are three. Um, we're in actually in 2A girls soccer. The boys are actually in 3A. There are fewer girls teams, so that's why we kind of fall into 2A, and there are more boys teams, so they're still 3A. Mm. Um, their draw, so their sectional is, is different than us. It, they have different uh, teams in theirs. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, actually they drew a bye and they get the winner of Richmond and somebody. So um, they were, they, I'm sure Coach Bottomley liked getting the bye. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and uh, he's had some good success over the years. He's, had some, he's, he's really done well. Yeah. He, uh, he started out, he and I started. Started out about the same time, and then I took a little hiatus, and he continued on. He's really racked up the, the wins and built a really, really good program. You stepped back into this. You were drafted uh, partway into the season to, to take this team over, um, something you hadn't expected, but uh, you were willing to, I, to step up and, and I, do I it was. For the kids, I, I was. Sure. I, I, knew, I knew most of the girls, and I knew that they, they, would, work, they would work hard for me and, and give me everything they got. And that, to me, that, that's the, the most enjoyable part is to watch the girls work toward that goal and work hard. And I, I, I took a look at the roster, and I knew, I knew I had girls that would do that. So, so I agreed to do that. Great, great. For this year. For this year. <laughs> We had a football game Friday night, guys. Uh, yeah. Turned out to be a, a winning night for the Spartans. Uh, Jeffrey, you impressed with the CHS? Uh, yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> let's just say I, I kept the clock running a lot. Uh, let's just <laughs> let's say that. Um, they, they, they played uh, yes. played pretty well. Uh, high offensive output? Uh, the highest of the year, I think, okay. by, by far. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, 61 points. We, uh, TV3 was there, of course, when uh, the team from Indianapolis, Broad Ripple, came to Spartan Stadium. And right now, let's uh, take a look at some of the highlights from that game. Pre-game pre ceremonies here. Uh, first Rockets. play from scrimmage for the Rockets, and they cough up the football, I think. Yep, fumbled it right away and it's left Spartans in a very good position. Yeah, and we took advantage of the big break, so that's important when you when you force a, a turnover, if you capitalize on it, that's the name of the game. And Foreman takes it in. Yeah, Donovan Foreman number twelve. He was a busy guy and in fact all those Spartans were Friday night. And this one. Uh, things just didn't get any better for for Ripple, as they No, it, it started off uh, on the wrong foot, and they just never recovered uh, with the Spartans jumping out in front early in the game. And uh, right there, lead it 20 to nothing. Well, they did have this one kid, and we weren't sure of his name, but. Uh, uh, quite an athlete, and there you see him. Yes. Free, uh, he, Kennison, we think, was his name. Yes, he wasn't on the roster or anything, so it was difficult for us to know just who he was. And Spartans go up 26 to 6, or then it became 27 to 6. And they're off to the races again. But, uh, yeah, they had a lot of speed on on their team, but our defense kept them pretty well in check, but a few times they were able to get away. Now, right here, I thought that 
a little excessive right there that when uh, yeah, Adam Kelly was uh, thrown through to the, Kelly to the ground. Yeah, I he thought, had to come out for a while. I, I thought that, uh, that possibly should have been a player ordered off the field, but the official didn't see it that way. So. Foreman again, scoring for Connersville. A lot of excitement that night, homecoming night. Big crowd for CHS, not many though from Ripple. No, they don't have much fan support. At halftime. Uh, halftime, Spartans up big, and here's the uh, king and queen. <laughs> Allie Angeles and Donovan Foreman. <laughs> Allie's on my side. Oh, is she? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the score this time, it's number 32 running into the end zone. Don't do boys. Spartans took off where they left off in the first half. Yeah, they were able to penetrate the defense of Broad Ripple. A nice 80 yard run that time by the boys. Yeah, I think he's over a thousand yards now rushing, I believe, for for the area. Has a third of the season to go yet. And uh, there is Messer taking it in. Caleb Messer, he one of the freshmen, and several of those young guys got to play in the final period when the Spartans had a a good lead. And Rocket's final score there. You said when some of the other guys were in, but uh, able to put six more up. Yeah, that came with just seconds remaining in, mm -hmm. in the ball game. Which, uh, yeah. they got beyond the Spartan defense. Gave them something positive to uh, ride home with. And uh, yes, I, made I the trip a little hope bit, they so. found the, the way home. They had a hard time <laughs> finding Spartan Field. <laughs> Well, I heard the bus was 30 minutes late getting there, and then they got in traffic on I-70, so it, uh, mm -hmm. it was a and struggle getting here, I guess. Didn't, didn't leave uh, Indianapolis till 4.30, so. <laughs> they probably thought it was an Indianapolis opponent mm -hmm. somewhere. And they, somewhere. They forgot that but they had to travel for a while. Now, I saw on the internet that uh, Bob Powers had said, somebody had asked the question, uh, most points that Spartans had, had scored in in a football game. Mm -hmm. And he did, didn't have all of his records, but from his recollection that uh, 61 points may have been a school record. You know, mm. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I would I would like to know that for sure, but uh, yes. I don't remember that many points being put up uh, by a Spartan team. And uh, I've been around a while, and, and so is Jeff, not quite as long. He's <laughs> quite a bit younger, and as have you, Fran. I don't remember 61 points or anything higher than that either. So it's quite an achievement for, uh, for the Spartans. Mm -hmm. In other football over the weekend, uh, the Spartans' uh, opponents that are still on the schedule are East Central. They're 4-2, and two, and they won over South Dearborn. 34 to nothing, I believe, and there's no game. surprise there. No, and Lawrenceburg that the Spartans play in their next home game, their final home game on October the 2nd. Lawrenceburg is 5-1. to one. They defeated Batesville 34 to 27, and Batesville, the Spartans' final regular season game at Batesville, they are 3-3 three and three after that loss to, to Lawrenceburg. So. Tough, tough stretch coming up here, but uh, I like the way the kids are playing. And Yes, uh, I think it's the toughest time of the schedule coming mm -hmm. up, but that's the way a coach wants it. I mm -hmm. mean, they, they want to start playing tough games, have tough opposition. Get as ready for tournament. tournament. Yeah. Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah. sure would like to see a big crowd down at East Central. It's just a short drive down to St. Leon on uh, Friday night. I know the Spartans would certainly appreciate the backing. How long does it take to get there? Oh, 40 minutes or less. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. just um, Across the county line, south of Brookville, on okay. State Road One. Mm -hmm. Go uh, over seventy. I think. No, over seventy-four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Over uh, State Road forty-six and I seventy-four, and you're right there. Saint Leon is the place. Saint Leon, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> Other area teams. Union County is three and three. They lost to Cambridge City, twelve to eight. That's the first win for Cambridge City. I think that 
was a real surprise. Mm -hmm. that I was came. surprised when I saw yes. that score. Mm -hmm. Twelve to eight, kind yeah. of unusual yeah. football score. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Centerville is five to one. They won over Northeastern fourteen to nothing. Rushville zero oh and six. They lost to Lapel forty two to twelve. Franklin County is four and two. They defeated Greensburg thirty eight to twenty eight. And Richmond is zero oh and six. They they lost to <laughs> <laughs> Logan Sports fifty four to six. And <laughs> All I have to do is chuckle. Sam, we shouldn't be <laughs> laughing about that because uh, I'm sure the Richmond folks are in a world of hurt right now, oh, football yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> Jeff, you have any comment? Nope. <laughs> no, thanks. I, I know Sam's feelings about that. Mm -hmm. Both both of the R teams on our schedule are 0-4. That, sometimes, sometimes that happens. Sometimes happens. That's yes. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, I'm sure they'll turn the programmer around oh, in, yes. in, in Richmond. Uh, uh, what do you do at high school? My, what do I do? Teaching. I, I'm, I'm a phys ed teacher. Okay, yeah. good deal. Yeah. Good deal. And uh, you are also busy in, in the fall, I believe, in sports? Uh, in, in the spring, I am. In the yeah, spring? In the spring, I coach yeah. track. And, okay. Um, yeah, I'm the boys' track coach. Okay. Um, that actually starts in February. Some people think it's the, <laughs> it's the spring, but it starts in February. Yes. Some of my guys are, are even running in January. So, okay. So really isn't that much longer until we, we're, we're looking at um, starting some, a little bit of training. And uh, what are you looking at? What, what's your season look like? Uh, track? track? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think we'll be a little bit better this year. Uh, we got... Most of our guys were younger. Now, we did lose a few really mm -hmm. important keys, but um, most of our guys were younger, and if all those guys come back, I, I think we'll have a pretty good year. How long have you been uh, coaching track? 23 or 4 years, yeah, I, I think. I, yeah, I don't, okay. I've lost track. <laughs> That's a bad lost pun, isn't it? Track, oh, track is good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I started, out, I started out in middle school for 4 yeah. or 5 years, and I, I did I think this might be my, my 21st high school season, oh, wow. I think. Yeah. It's only my third as the head coach. But. Uh, some best seasons, can you talk about some of your past seasons? When... Uh, well, there was a streak there when the girls won about six straight sectionals. That was mm -hmm. a pretty good streak. Again, we were talking about Laura Richards, and she was not only a soccer player, but she was a four-year track okay. girl for me and uh, and a bunch of those actually a bunch of those girls on the soccer team actually ran track for me too and mm -hmm. you get a good group of athletes <laughs> and make you look really good as a coach you know sure sure yeah uh, some of these soccer girls are you expecting them to be in track stars uh, yeah, I do have a lot. That's another reason I, I, I agreed to, mm -hmm. to take over. Um, a lot of these girls run track for me too. Good. Um, yeah, so yeah, I am expecting some some <laughs> good things out of them in the spring as well. Yes, absolutely. You, you coached basketball also for a number of years and uh, had had some About pretty good 20, yeah. pretty good success there. Do you do you we miss that? Okay. That, that's I'm not very, going, very intensive. I'm not but. going back. To, are you trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no. I'm not, I, I do. You know what I do miss? I miss the, the one thing I always, every, every Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I miss <laughs> sitting on the bench and watching the guys run out of the tunnel. There's nothing like it. There really isn't. And by the way, we're, we're recording this on Monday, uh, the 25th. In 59 days, they will be running out of that. 59 tunnel. days. Yes. I, I should have known that you would know that. But, yeah, I, I, do, I do miss that. Do, do I miss the summer getting on the bus for the away game in the summer? No. Do, do I miss the open gyms? No. Yeah. But I do miss, I do miss mm -hmm. the, the, the game coaching aspect. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Atmosphere second to none. You, you can't beat it. I mean, like I said, I, I coached for probably 20 years, and we'd go scout places, we'd go, you know, play different places, and there's there's no place better. You worked under some pretty good head coaches too. I did. Scott Hetty. I started out with Scott Hetty. He's uh, now at Carmel. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard Renner. Mm -hmm. Howard Renner. What Rodney character? Klein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there yeah. were some good ones. Mm -hmm. Good men. Good men. They mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. Learned a lot from them. Had fun with them. Sure. I did too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you coaching uh, freshman or I coached, varsity? Uh, well, I started out in middle school, worked my way up. I last about ten years. I coached a JV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coach Klein was here. 
Okay. Uh, you had Matt Howard at one time? Well, I never got Matt. Oh, didn't you? Uh, he, went, uh, he, went, he went straight to he the went varsity. Right so, from that. Yeah, and, and, well, well deserved. I, I wonder mean, why. Yeah, I wonder why, yeah. But, <laughs> would I have taken him? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, I would have. Well, I thought maybe we were going to give you, give you credit for uh, no, his development or something. I, yeah. I, w I, w I wish, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I tried to talk Rodney into giving him for a quarter. You know, you can always play five quarters. Mm -hmm. He could play one for me and four varsity. Sure. And I didn't have a problem with that. <laughs> he didn't agree with me, so. And you were a player yourself. Well, I was on the team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's say that. I was on the well, team. <laughs> well, part of that team. Part of a team, yeah. I, I was, but... Uh, how did you how did you do as a player or what what, what no, not, how did team no, how did the well. teams do let's put it the teams way. we were really we were pretty good oh, okay. we were pretty good um, I think the the worst my four years I think we got beat in the regional final we went to the semi state we won the sectional all four years okay um, so yeah we we had some good teams when I was there was that that was pre class basketball yeah that was okay. that was one class okay. that was the way it should be oh, okay oh you're a Oh yeah. Okay, you're one of those. See who the best, <laughs> see who's the best. That's right. Well, that makes yeah. I I think class has really hurt the program in a way. I think it's hurt attendance. Yes. I, think, uh, I mean, okay, you who won the one A state title last year? Yeah. Don't know. I, I don't. I mean, I, and I'm just saying, you know, yes. every year you would know who who was a state champion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now it's, you, you really don't, unless you're somehow affiliated with that school. So. Well, I suppose it's a good thing for, to have the four different classes and four schools get up, say, we were champions in our class. Mm. Sam I, doesn't agree. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't agree. Um, <laughs> I, I believe, and I still believe, that the two state champion is, is the 4A champion. Uh, yes. Now, back a few years ago when we were in 3A, if we'd, if we'd had hung a 3A banner, yeah, we'd have been very proud of that too. Mm -hmm. But um, I hadn't seen excitement um, like we've had except for, for a long time, uh, save the last two years, especially this last year when, uh, yes. when everywhere we went, we had more people there. And, and the opposing teams were always commenting on... Uh, our fan support, and, and that goes back, and it reminds me so much of, of uh, the one class era. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but we are fortunate here in our city that, um, that basketball is still king, I think. <laughs> that, uh, so not, and that's not to take away from any of the other sports, because those kids work hard too, but it's just it's what the fans like to see. A girls basketball a season coming up. Early November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about 20 days sooner than the boys. And there will be a sectional this year mm -hmm. at Here. Spartan Bowl for the girls. Mm -hmm. First time in a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it starts, I believe, the last part of January, I believe, mm -hmm. is, is the opening uh, opening date. So that'll be something I'm sure the Spartan fans will be looking forward mm -hmm. to. It's good for the community. It brings people to town. And, yes. And yes. Uh, they get to see our community that... Uh, Spend a little money here. That's good for everybody. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Jeff, you have any youngsters uh, in sports at CHS? Uh, yeah, my daughters both swim and play okay. tennis. Yeah, one's, right. a, one's a senior and one's a sophomore. Okay. That's hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's hard for me, Sam, believe me. Um, <laughs> Especially seeing the places she wants to go to college and the, <laughs> and the financial tab. So, yeah. It is hard to believe. Um, very proud of them. They're, they're good girls. Mm -hmm. I know they are. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Jeff Cooley Thank has been you. our guest tonight. He is the head coach of the girls' soccer here at CHS. And, again, uh, best of luck in the final two games in the tournament. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Fran. Thanks, everybody, for watching the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3.